unidentified Dr. Schultz IQ-127. To be the superintendent of a school district like Hardcastle, with its 47 buildings and more than 30,000 students, was a huge responsibility. A lot of administrators would have hundreds of complicated rules to follow. I only had one, no screw-ups. So when I took time out of my busy schedule and burdened some duties to attend a middle school basketball game, I expected to see orderly students, good sportsmanship, and happy alumni. What I did not expect to see was a giant metal ball blasting into the gymnasium, scattering players like 10 pins. Not only did it create a dangerous situation, but it also reflected very badly in the Hardcastle schools. Miraculously, no one was injured. Still, there was a lot of chaos as the parents of the players rushed to their sons on the floors in an effort to protect them from whatever this onslaught was. I knew instantly. That globe was part of the statue of Atlas that stood on the knoll overlooking the school, and it certainly hadn't rolled itself down to the gym. I raced through the shattered door and onto the lawn. I could see the ribbon of crushed glass all the way back to the figure of Atlas, who looked peculiar, bent under the weight of absolutely nothing. The culprit lay in the flattened path, raised up on his elbows, staring at the damage. Guilty. You there, I called. The boy tried to scramble up and run, but he couldn't get any traction on the squashed turf. By the time he found his feet, I was upon him and he was caught. Come with me to my office. His shoulders slumped. Yeah, okay. He looked as worried as he ought to be. I drew some small satisfaction from that. The administrative building was on the very same campus, but the boy didn't speak on the way over. Not even to protest his innocence. A fat lot of good that would have done him. I had him dead to rights and the evidence... A 400-pound bronze sphere and the damage it had caused spoke plainly about what he had done. At last, we reached my office. I glared at him across my desk. Do you know who I am? He shook his head and had the grace to look a little scared. I am Dr. Schultz, superintendent of the Hardcastle Independent School District. I'll have your name and your school's name right now. Donovan Curtis, I go here. I mean... Hardcast Middle, where, uh, it happened? I wrote the information on a piece of paper on the cluttered desk in front of me. Well, Donovan Curtis, I don't have to tell you that you are in big trouble right now. You're lucky that no one was hurt or even killed by that stun of yours. Why would you do such a thing? It was an accident. If he thought he could get away with an excuse like that, he had picked the wrong administrator. A giant metal ball doesn't plow through a building by accident. He spoke up again. I hit the statue with a branch, but I didn't think the world would fall off. You didn't think? My secretary, Mr. Bourbon, came bustling in, looking worried. I'm sorry to disturb you, Dr. Schultz, but you're needed urgently back at the gym. Someone called the fire department from a cell phone, and you're the only one with the authority to send them away, she frowned. Nothing's on fire, is it? No, of course not. I was halfway to the door when I hesitated. What to do with the boy? He was looking hopeful as if he were home free. But believe me, he wasn't. It would serve him right if I left him sitting here, cooling his heels, while I went out to deal with the mess he'd made. But who knew how long that would take? By now those firefighters would be finding code violations in the gym. And I had a dinner meeting across town. I skewered him with my most severe expression. You can go. I'll send for you tomorrow morning and we can continue this discussion. He was out of there like a shot. I wasn't far behind him when Mr. Bourbon called me back. I'm sorry to bother you again, but Student Services needs the list of the new candidates for the gifted program. (sighs) I sighed. Did everything have to pass through me? I was only one person. It's on my desk, Cynthia. You can't miss it. What a nightmare. There was damage to the gym floor in addition to the doors, which were a total loss. The foundry that had made the statue had gone out of business five years ago, so good luck getting a replacement globe for the Atlas. The district's insurance agent was on vacation for the next two weeks. I missed my dinner meeting and my dinner. By the time I got back to my office, I almost, I was almost insane with aggravation. This was exactly why I couldn't tolerate screw-ups. There was no such thing as just one. Their first led to the second, and pretty soon they were coming at you in battalions. I needed to accomplish one real thing on this miserable day, and I knew exactly what it was going to be. I was going to call that boy's parents and let them know the damage and chaos their son's vandalism had caused. 
I scanned my desk for the paper where I'd written his name. It was gone. I scoured every item on that desk, and not just once, nothing. Cynthia! But she had already left for the day. How could this be? That boy must have snuck back in and stolen the paper, hoping I'd forget his name among the 30,000 students I'm responsible for. Well, he was wrong about that. His name was... His name was... Sudden overpowering chagrin, I had broken my only rule.